Hi, Maria here from Conscious Nuggets. Today I want to talk to you about boundaries. An interesting topic, I think, especially with Christmas coming up. And also one that deserves more than one nugget, but today is going to be the first. So, often we think of boundaries as something that we need to assert with other people. And I recently have made a point of that myself in my life. I wanted to become more assertive and make sure that I speak up whenever I didn't feel comfortable with what was being asked of me, whether that's at work or in a different context. Now, in those instances, the direction of how we assert our boundaries, if you will, is really outside in. So we're basically protecting ourselves against external demands that if they weren't met with us putting up a boundary, would actually leave us feeling uncomfortable or worse. However, I've learned that I not only need to learn to assert my boundaries with other people, but actually it's hugely important to assert boundaries with myself. And that direction is really inside out. Now, I don't mean by that the demands that we place on ourselves. But it's more in terms of how far we allow ourselves to go with something. For example, how much effort do we put into an interaction with another person? So I want to ask you something. Have you ever tried to engineer a connection or, you know, meeting up with someone, whether that's an acquaintance, someone you fancied, a friend, and try to think about what is going on in the other person's head in order to understand what might be a barrier for them to connect with you and to engage with you. And if you thought you, you found that obstacle or reason why they aren't connecting with you, you then went on to try and remove that barrier by, for example, very carefully crafting a well thought through message that was designed to do exactly that. Remove that obstacle so the other person would willingly engage with you because that's what you want. Now, I know I've been there. In fact, I once met a guy and I asked him out and we went out and we had a great time, okay? There was some level of connection. We had a few things in common. He was very appreciative of me having asked him out and the time we were spending together. And he was also speaking about what we could do next time we meet. Well, it was all good, except that I also realized that he was in a place in life where he wasn't emotionally available. So I thought to myself that I probably would have to lower my expectations in that regard. I nevertheless wanted to meet up again and get to know him a bit better because I felt that we had something to build on and I was happy to just go the flow, be friends and see where it would lead eventually. So instead of him coming back to me after meeting, six days or so after we had met, I actually got in touch with him because I had this thing coming up and I thought that it might be quite nice to go there together. So I asked if he'd be up for that. Unfortunately, he wasn't um, available for that and we had quite a nice chat, it was all good except for the fact that he wasn't making a counter-proposal. Now that was bugging me. And at that point in time I had a choice to make. Now I'm going to be vulnerable now and let you in into my thought process at the time. I was wondering how come he isn't making a counter-proposal? I thought he wanted to meet up too. He, he did say we were going to meet up again, and it did feel like there was a connection. What's going on? I wonder what's holding him back. Well, maybe he's feeling the pressure for this to turn into something romantic. Maybe I should let him know that there is no pressure, that I'm happy to just, you know, meet as friends. And maybe then he will actually suggest something and engage. And then I caught myself and thought, wait a minute, no, I'm not going to send all of that because I don't need to be making it easy for someone else to
to want to meet up. I don't need to convince anyone to meet up with me. I realized that I had to assert some serious boundaries with myself, that I had basically stretched myself too far. I was doing the other person's work for them. Because even if my guess was right, it would have been on him to communicate that. He could have just said, I'd love to meet up again, but only on friendship terms. Instead, I was considering in my head, trying to remove some sort of hypothetical obstacle for him. You see, I also realized that had I sent that message, I would have been undermining my own sense of self-worth. Because what that message wouldn't have transmitted is, I know my worth and I need you to work it out for yourself and act accordingly. Instead, it would have said, I am willing to work very hard and get out of my own way to make you see my worth and get attention from you. Now, don't ever make it your responsibility for someone else to work out your worth. If you think that they have some sort of barrier going on, it's on them to remove it, not on you. What would have been okay, I believe, is to either ask a question in order to see if the assumption in my head was actually correct or not, or to just wait to get something back, rather than making yet another move by preempting what was getting in the way for the other person to make a move themselves. You with me? Right. You see, I think the lesson that I've learned is actually applicable in many contexts, and I'd like you to remember this now with Christmas coming up. My desire for connection at the time was actually about to trump my sense for my own boundaries. And I'd like you to be mindful of that with yourself. Some of us are really good at anticipating other people's needs, but there is a problem with that. In fact, too, you're never responsible for preempting anybody's needs. Each and every one of us is responsible for communicating those. And number two, we risk losing ourselves in the process by not holding up our own boundaries. So let's say, for example, that you feel a desire to spoil everyone around the Christmas table. All I'd like you to do and what I'd encourage you to do is to ask yourself where that desire truly stems from. So if it was a case of your sister having done the same last year and you really uh, appreciated that and you're simply someone who takes pleasure from seeing how everyone else enjoys themselves, then that's fair enough, great. But if it's actually more a case of you hating the fact that you feel you need to perform during those family gatherings and you know that your grumpy aunt or your demanding dad are just never happy no matter what you do. So what do you do? You try even harder to anticipate their needs. So if you do that or something like that in order to elicit something, in order to get something back, whether that's warmth, connection, or recognition or approval, well, in that moment you're then unknowingly giving away the power of who gets to define your sense of self-worth. And guess what? It's not you in that moment. Your sense of self-worth hinges on you asserting your boundaries with yourself as well and on acting in ways that say, I am worthy. Even when I don't attend to your every need, even when I don't get what I put in, and even when I decide to not give more than I receive. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't ever give more than you receive or that you should never be proactive. But what I'm saying is that you want it to be a conscious choice after weighing up what's at stake, rather than you acting out of an overwhelming need for connection, for example, and then trampling all over your own boundaries. Interestingly, it's you in that moment who's trampling all over your own boundaries, nobody else. And it's also you who's the guardian of your boundaries, no one else. So if this video resonated with you, please like it and share it. Leave your comments 
and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time here at Conscious Nugget.